We just upcycled this crazy thrift store find, broken door and all, <laughs> into <laughs> this. Our Beauty and the Beast inspired armoire cabinet. And we'll show you how we did it right now. What is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do it, build it, or make it? So do we. And we have a new video each week. This week, we're making a hulking hutch display case. Like, <laughs> huge. So we had our first customer call from outside and want to come in to pick up some country chic paint. Now, when we were still at home, I could put it on the front porch, no big deal. But he wanted to take a look at colors. <laughs> and guess where they were? On a rack in the warehouse. And so I told Garrett, we need to start putting those up front because now that we have a retail space and we're listed as a retailer for country chic paint, people are gonna to want to come in and take a look. So I need a display cabinet to put these paints out front. So? So she picked the biggest hutch she could find. <laughs> yeah, so I, I saw a little bookcase and I was like, no, we could do this little $30 bookcase, but what I think we need to really showcase these paints in a retail setting is this hutch. And I don't know if you can see, you don't have to get too detailed with it. It has a base cabinet and then it has a top hutch. So this week we decided we were gonna break these into two projects and this week we were gonna tackle the base cabinet. Step one, we're gonna gather all of our supplies. This uh, was a pretty big shopping list, but we started with, we need a one, one by 12 by 10 foot. We need another one by 12 by eight foot. Hold up. This got real expensive real fast. We actually went to the store, the hardware store, and purchased all of the wood for this project. Walked out with a shocked look on our faces. We spent $240. Now that did include a full pack of nails, but everything else. That was no paint, nothing. Was 100% for this project, for this base cabinet, $240. And I knew that we had not yet purchase the materials to make the upper hutch. <laughs> Do the hutch. And it so. was gonna cost at least, at least as much. So we're talking close to $500 yeah. for this cabinet. Now I love building our own furniture, but you do have to have a reality check in there somewhere. <laughs> I said, this is so expensive for a pretty shaker, meaning simple, simple. <laughs> style cabinet. So, I mean, is it is it a build or a buy at that point? I mean. Yes, that's what I was faced with. So what'd we do? Step two, <laughs> a go find an alternative. We're gonna go hit the thrift shop and see uh, if we could come up with something that might suit our needs or we might be able to modify to suit our needs. Now I originally had planned to go to the thrift shop anyway because I was looking for some antique legs for the bottom of the space cabinet because I thought that would be cool. But now we have a new purpose for going to the thrift shop. We're gonna see if we can find something that maybe is a little bit cheaper that we can upcycle. Yeah, oh, upcycle, I like it. We're back, and look at what we found. A broken piece of furniture. Well, it's only a little <laughs> bit broken, just the store's broken. And it's got this crazy chicken wire on it. I don't even but understand not, that. No, you gotta see the vision. You gotta be a visionary here. For $175, which is already, what, $65 cheaper than the base cabinet that we were gonna start with, that didn't include the hutch. Or the paint. Or the paint, yes. Yeah, good point. Yeah. So we chose this cabinet. I think this cabinet is awesome. First of all, 
Doesn't it look like the cabinet from Beauty and the Beast? I yeah. mean, she looks like she should be talking to you. She looks like she should be saying, help me. <laughs> she is with this poor broken door. <laughs> the purpose of this cabinet is to store our country chic paint out here in what will one day be our retail space. So for now though, I think this cabinet will do a beautiful job of displaying those paints. Look at, so this shelf goes right here. And then there are three shelves over here. And then we have these drawers to store other things like brushes and extra finishes. It's, it's a great looking cabinet and it's much more ornate than oh, yeah, the one we do. were gonna do. Yeah, I'm definitely not this kind type of uh, carpenter. <laughs> I am more of a, just that'll do. And what's kind of cool about this that I love, it doesn't have like a false front here. The whole top here is scalloped and shaped yeah. in this arched design. The whole top is arched like this. And then the legs, they're just way fancier than what we would have built. Now granted, we do love that farmhouse look, which is why we're gonna paint this with our country chic paints and give it this farmhouse upcycled, Beauty and the Beast inspired. <laughs> farmhouse Beauty and the Beast. Huh? Yeah, wait till you see it, wait till you see it. Step three, uh, a return original supplies. That's, that's, uh, that's a Kim job. Back. Yep, yeah. Kim does all the returns. <laughs> yeah. He won't do a return. He will just keep it, that's it. I and it live now. with it forever. <laughs> he will not stand there and do a return, so I'll just take care of it. I'll do it. I'll take care of it. <laughs> It's so easy. It, all you need is the card. You don't even need a receipt these days. You just <laughs> it's a hassle. It's a hassle. Okay. <laughs> Step four. We're gonna gather all of our new supplies. This one's a, a much smaller list. This stuff fits in the car, actually. Right, I was gonna say. I don't know about smaller. We need quite a few things here. At least you can put it in a bucket. And <laughs> yeah, it all fit in a bucket. <laughs> so we'll start with that. We did need a bucket. <laughs> we needed some primer paint. We're gonna use our country chic paints. We have some beautiful colors picked out and I can't wait to see how they look on this cabinet. We needed some paint brushes, of course. Towels. Gloves. Vinegar. Water. Wood filler. And a little bit of sandpaper. And that is it. Step five, come up with a plan. We're gonna have to work together in Photoshop. I'm gonna take a picture, bring it into Photoshop, and kind of get a feel for what we're thinking we're gonna do to this thing. Yeah, that's the great thing about Photoshop is I can test out some color schemes of what I have in my head. I, I don't know if I, 100% if I wanna go a completely light finish or a dark finish and add some light details to it. We'll, we'll see, we'll see. That's what the design process is for, and that's what we're gonna do in Photoshop. I'm gonna take a picture, and I'll meet you in Photoshop. Step six. Now we're gonna clean it up and wipe it down. Give it a little wax on, wax off. And by wax on, wax off, I mean wipe it down with uh, vinegar. Yes, we're gonna remove these doors. I don't think we're gonna use these as we display the paint, but we are thinking we might use them as their own piece of artwork. We're gonna do something with it, remove the chicken wire and put something <laughs> else back there. So I think we could do something cool with these by themselves. So this piece is a veneer finish. This is not solid wood. There are solid wood pieces like these drawers pulls here. The fronts are solid wood. Uh, but in order to paint over this, we do need to clean this with one part vinegar and three parts water. So we're gonna give it a little sand, rough up the shiny finish a little with some 320 grit sandpaper, and then we're gonna give it a wipe down with that vinegar water solution and prep it for painting. I'm gonna remove all of the hardware and then fill in the holes with this uh, plastic, plastic wood. Yeah. Super dusty. 
We're just wiping it down with that vinegar and water mixture. I mean like super dusty. All right, now we're just gonna plug some of the holes with this plastic wood. It's like wood, but it's plastic. Step seven. Ooh, <laughs> now we primer. All right, so for this piece of furniture, as I said before, this has a veneer outside. So we have sanded it, cleaned it, sanded it. Now we need to prime it. Now you don't want to prime it with a latex primer because it's not going to adhere as well to this veneer outside. So we're using a shellac based primer. Country Chic has a bonding primer that's perfect for this job. However, I don't have any in stock at the moment. It's actually on its way here, but it won't be here for another week. So I had to go get this. We are using, my can is over there, something called Bin, and it's a shellac based primer, and we tinted it a navy blue that's gonna match our midnight sky paint. So this is like a, a halfway there. It's a tinted primer. <laughs> now we paint. <laughs> <laughs> all right, our primer coat is all dry. It's adhering really well. I can see it's very much prepped and ready for this chalk paint. And we're excited to show you uh, that blending paint technique. So we're going to be using three colors to paint this cabinet, the whole thing. We're gonna use Midnight Sky. We're gonna outline it in Midnight Sky. Then we're gonna add, start the blending process with a little tide pool. Come in a little bit with the tide pool. And then the center, it's gonna fade to string of pearls. String of pearls. So many fades. That's now, it. this is where Garrett and his artistic background comes into play. He's gonna be doing the blending for me. So uh, while he's blending, I'm gonna go ahead and paint everything that's just going to be uh, midnight sky. I'm gonna go ahead and paint all the solid sections. He's gonna start this blending technique, but I'll wait to get started. I'm gonna let you kinda show him. Can you talk through it a little bit? Yeah, we'll talk through it. Thin coats are better here. It is much better to layer this paint than it is to glop it on and wait for it to dry. It dries really fast in a thin coat. You can come back and put two coats on faster than you can wait for one thick coat to dry. All right, for the blending technique, what we found works best for our project <laughs> is to use Tide Pool down the middle. I cover it in Tide Pool, and then we're gonna come around the edge in the midnight sky, let them dry for a little bit, dry to the touch, and then we're gonna come in with the midnight sky and start to blend it in. And then the last part is the uh, pearl. No, string of pearls. String of pearls, yeah. blend that out. Oh, that, that's why you called it Pearl Harbor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so all that's on here right now is our coat of the primer, our tinted primer. And I don't know if you can tell from there, but the tide pool is just a little bit different from the primer, so that works out really well. Now with the round brush and the midnight sky, I'm just gonna come in and dab the paint where I want it until my brush is dry and then start to lightly swirl it into the skipping stone, stepping stone. Tide pool. Tide pool. <laughs> Every time it's another color, skipping stone. <laughs> just gonna get it up in the edges. Dab it around. Dab 
Damn, damn. Yeah, I want, don't want damn that. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. My smooth brush strokes will fix that. That woo in this corner. Woo in this corner. Woo in this corner. Start swirling, baby. Let me bring this guy out a little bit. All right, now I'm gonna just use little gentle swirls. Start to bring it out. Nice and dry on a piece of cardboard. Just start to gently swirl it out, swirl it on out. All right, we'll wet our cardboard. Get our brush a little damp. Just using a small round brush and a string of pearls, just get a lightly dab it in there. Just get a little bit on there. Just a little teeny bit. Yeah, and then I'm gonna rub it around on this board. I don't want a lot, I just want a little bit. And just light hand. A little bit of water. Spritz. A little spritzing. Coming back in with a round brush and the tide pool. A little, same thing. Gonna try to keep it a little bit dry. But I'm gonna keep my canvas a little bit wet. I'm just gonna gently blend it in. Same thing in the last two here. Paint's all dry. Let's spin it around, throw all the drawers in it, see how she looks. Look at this beauty. All right, we're halfway there, but we're about out of time. <laughs> <laughs> it is Thursday night, so we're gonna have to finish this up uh, next week, but we have big plans. Kim has big dreams. Right, if you saw the little design that Garrett did and you wanna come back next week, we're gonna add all of the Cricket stuff. The bling, the accents. The bling. Yeah, that, oh, then we add the accents. That's right. We're gonna put our stripe in the back. I wanna add some gold diamonds. We're gonna use our Glowforge. We've got plans for handles for this thing made from the Glowforge. And I think we're gonna add a little something on the sides here. Those, yeah. uh, all those details haven't been worked out yet, but this project started out as one thing. 
grew to this, which was a bit adventurous for two days worth of work. And now I have bigger dreams. So we're gonna <laughs> yeah, have it to just, split this video into two parts. It just keeps getting bigger. Who knows how big this thing will be. It might actually be animated in the end. <laughs> it might actually dance when we're done. <laughs> Uh, one thing I was going to add though, you could leave it like this. It's beautiful. Um, I did leave this shelf a light blue. It could do it in a dark blue. I love the mix of colors, but what this chalk paint needs is it can't sit just like this, this raw chalk paint. It does need a top coat on it and we will at the end. We're not doing it yet because we've got more work to do, but Country Chic has this clear coat that you would put on and over all of the chalk paint and they also carry a tough coat which is what we're going to use for each of these shelf tops uh, because we're going to have paint on here on off on off all the time so we want to make sure it has a nice tough surface for each of these shelves so I just wanted to show you guys that if you stopped here I wanted you to know that you do need a clear coat or tough coat this paint but we're not we're not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're not joining us for the patron after show, we will see you next week where we'll finish doing building and making it. That's right. <laughs>